All right. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Paul Tranny here. I'm going to dive into today's master class. Feel free to say hello. We'd love to hear from you. I see Wade. I see Marsha. Oz, good to have you here. Uh, welcome. Yeah, so hopefully you like the new background. I'm just kind of messing around in After Effects. Uh, but today we're going to be playing around in Photoshop and actually uh, sort of unveiling some filters that um, you may or may not have used. Chances are you have not. So what's up, Steve? Good to see you. I always bring a smile to my face. I just appreciate being here. It's a good day to be alive. And that's what my coffee tells me. <laughs> so uh, awesome. Uh, Ishans, by the way, we'll get you all caught up. Um, you know, this stuff is almost like never ending, but uh, uh, the big goal is to look back on what you've done a year ago and realize how awesome and how far you've come. So that's the whole goal is to just kind of see how far you can go and how far you can take it. So um, that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, let's just go ahead and switch into Photoshop and we'll talk about filters. And we're going to start kind of from uh, sort of square one if you will. This being, eh, maybe not quite a square, from rectangle one. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, blue is my favorite color. Thank you for bringing that. It makes me feel confident. Thank you, Michelle. Too kind. Um, t -t 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 awesome. Quick shout out in chat. Misspelling words left and right. I'm just starting out with a simple image. I have other things that I, I, I'm gonna have. Be, I'm gonna be working with, right? So I have some cool, some cool concepts and some cool ideas uh, that we can work with. Okay, uh, but let's just start with something simple. To be honest with you, I have, I'm gonna have the astronaut. Just so it's not too plain there. But I'll open up my gradients panel, you know, and I can drop in a gradient. Uh, make sure you have a new layer, right? You could drop it on there or just click on it. And this just gives us a place to start. Just so you know. Ooh, I love this. I love this like sunrise sunset look, um, which looks great. Hello, Michelle. How oh, cool. Yeah, I, uh, I agree, Cornell. Slow down the animation a little bit. I'm probably going to change it. To be honest with you, it's probably just going to be for this one stream that I actually have that background animation. Because I made it and I'm like, yeah, it's not quite working. Uh, what's up, Muriel? Muriel, an elephant in the room. I see ya. Sins as well. Cool. I'm doing well. Uh, let's go ahead and work on some filters. So we have a gradient right here. We could also use photos. So let me just go ahead and grab a photo from my desktop. And when I say filters, I can kind of show you what most people use, but we're going to dive into some more obscure ones is the goal. Uh, so again, I'll just come in here. I'll take any one of these images that looks kind of cool, like this one. Why not, right? Let's grab that. Let's open it up in Photoshop. So here we are. We have this lovely image. We could always unlock it. A lot of times when it comes to uh, filters and effects, we will convert this to a smart object just to protect it. So this is the scene one, whatever we want to call it. And then we go up here to filter. And we can see a number of filters that we can use. So a lot of times when I say filter, people think filter gallery. We can kind of go through that. And I'll show you when you'd use it and what you can do with it. Uh, all right. Okay, cool. Reverb Mike's likes it. I'm going to do a bunch of squares and I want them to kind of flip and rotate through artwork. So that's what I want to do with the background. That's all. Um, yes, thank you so much for answering that, Steve. Awesome. So the thing about filters, a lot of these, um, honestly, what people use probably most often, if I say filter, they're going to use Camera Raw or they're going to use these blur galleries, right? Which are really pretty straightforward. So if I decide to go to Tilt Shift, right, it's going to go ahead and make this point um, clear and then everything outside of there blurry. So I'll just drag that up. You can see what it does. Just kind of narrows the focus on, say, just this part. I can grab this end and increase the fall off. So this is easy. Everybody uses this, right? Like I get it. Works well. I want to go beyond this stuff is the goal. Okay, <laughs> Sean, <laughs> master class is just how fast can I go? Oh, that's funny. That's true though. It's true, my friend. I sometimes think that people get bored and I gotta go faster so you're not bored, but this is a master class, so I don't need to really tell you too much about smart objects. I think we have like the, the, the smartest people in the room typically uh, when it comes to these uh, Friday master classes. So that's why I'm glad you're here. 
Sean, that's so funny. <laughs> um, okay, so we went through that, right? And I encourage you, out of all those, what do I use? I use the Blur Gallery and the other more popular ones is Camera Raw Filter. So I'm just gonna briefly mention these, right? Right in here, we wanna make it better button right up here, auto. I would just click right there and we can automatically adjust uh, it'll automatically adjust the shadows, the highlights, the texture, the clarity, which I could then in turn increase, maybe do a dehaze if that does anything to it. Maybe add a little bit more texture just to give it just more detail all in all, right? That's good. All right. Yeah, what does smart object mean in the first place? I don't know. Um... Uh, well, I mean, I don't know where we came up with the name because smart object is technically just another file. So notice how I just have this JPEG open. If I double click on the smart object, smart object, it could just be called like smart file or something, but this is a separate file that exists actually on my hard drive. So if you right click, you can go down here and say, hey, reveal that smart object, which is just a file on my desktop. Oh, there the sneaky little file is, right? But what's cool is all the files will still point to the same, or all the layers, uh, whenever I duplicate it. So if I duplicate this again, Command J. So now we have the same scene, one, this one and this one. Same smart object. For this one, I can play with it some more, right? I can, it's still gonna reference the same file. And this is what I would do typically with filters, is I'd go up here and I'd tap into filter gallery. I wanna get into some really cool stuff though, today. Whoa, static. Bzz. All right, so this is the filter gallery, right? What makes this look really good is not just applying a filter and calling it done. It's applying a filter on top of a duplicated layer. So that's typically what I would do, right? So let's just kind of zoom out so we can kind of see these mountains. And uh, we can go through all these categories, but this is honestly just your time to explore. Clicking through artistic, brush strokes, distort. I'll go into sketch though, by the way. So this is very much a black and white uh, treatment. You're thinking, okay, I might not use this. I might not use some of these just straight out of the box, right? Such as graphic pen, which I really kind of, I'm really into this. Like it makes it look kind of grainy. Okay, I can use that. maybe adjust the stroke direction if I want to. The length looks good, we'll click okay. So yeah, exactly, Davika, trying texture when it comes to the filter gallery is a great way to go. Okay, so here it is, right? It's like, gives it a whole new look. But remember, the original is right behind it. So I can turn this one on, and I think filters do great and uh, play well when it comes to using blend modes with them. So as I kind of roll down, I can say, hey, just affect the darks or the lights, right? And you can start to see how we get to keep that color, but we actually start to get to bring in that texture from that, uh, um, what did we call it? It was uh, the, con the crayon or something, the graphic pen. So now we have just that graininess is all. Let's go to a different one actually. Screen, screen looks really good. This kind of makes it just look uh, a little bit more like it's done on film. And it's a little more fun for what it's worth, all right? <laughs> all right. Ooh, D Mia used dehaze to remove effects. That's good. Dehaze, that's a good, that is a good call. Uh, Amir, just so you know about the gradients that I was showing a second ago, which is what I want to get into next, is some more advanced things, right? But uh, no, you don't need to buy these from me. I'll sell them to you, sure. But they're already actually already in uh, Photoshop. So just go ahead and append uh, or actually add legacy gradients. And that's all I've done here. It's like I have this spaceman, he'd be kind of cool to put in this scene. And maybe I have a gradient back here and I can click through these different ones. I'm picking one that has lots of uh, drastic sort of lights and darks, okay? So with that done, 
I think this is going to be kind of fun, right? Uh, oh, yeah, I believe you, but I believe it, Michelle. Uh, After Effects needs the live blending previews. I'm going to convert this to a smart object. I just did that with some magic shortcut keys. Right, we can go to filters. Another one I use a lot. If you guys have known me for a day, you'd probably know that I love like playing with Liquify, right? So we can get some fun nebula type stuff. I'll just start pushing this content around, right? And bring some of those darks in here like this. And then let's just turn off show backdrop to make sure this is fully covered like so. And we can click okay. Right, so new filter, we'll turn that off. The reason I made this a smart object is I can go back in here and change the gradient at any time and then close that and we can see what it does. Okay. Um, yeah. Paulo, by the way, you asked a good question. Anybody know any good websites for free high quality render images? I would encourage you to use uh, Pixel Squid. Um, technically, it's actually not free, but you know what? Anything good is probably worth spending some money on it. But Pixel Squid is actually 3D renders of, of an, a 3D object at uh, different angles with different properties. So we can see right in here, sure enough, I have to log in. But once you get logged in, then you can go ahead and search on rest, uh, excuse me, astronaut. And then you could go ahead and have that astronaut in here. Let's do it. Wait for it. And here we have all these astronauts. I like this one where he's like kind of floating in the air, like this one right here. Boom, what about this guy? Let's add this one to our Photoshop, <clears throat> Photoshop Lightbox, right? Because there's that plugin, we can jump back out here here it is, sure enough, let's just hit refresh, and there's our astronaut that we can grab and drop in. And again, I'm sorry, it's, it's not free, but hey, you know what? These guys deserve to get their bills paid. There we go, you gotta click on it and not drag it. But now I have this guy right here. Now I could rotate him, rotate him around, right? You ready for this? There he is, and now, Obviously, he's going to be in this crazy nebula, okay? All right. Yes, exactly, Noor. Um, yeah, you got it. You got it. But this is pretty cool, right? We can go ahead and angle this the way we want. And you know what? In this case, I don't want to have shadows. So turn those off. Turn on high resolution. Right? Pretty easy to use. In this case, I'd probably scale him down as well, right? We can scale him down, put him in the center, or kind of coming up or down or something like that. He kind of needs to be placed in here in an interesting fashion. And of course, the lighting needs to change as well. So right in here, check this out. This is pretty interesting. Um, uh, I, I definitely need to add contrast to this astronaut to fit in with the background. Right? There's a couple different, there's so many things we need to do with this. It just has issues. Right? First thing is I, it needs more contrast. So the, so the, the blacks are, the, the, the grays are black. You know, everything's darker. There's more contrast. A lot of people will jump over. And you could do this. You could go to levels right in here, right? By adding that in a, as an adjustment layer. And you can click auto, right? And make sure this is a clipping mask. Clipped. Shabam. Right, and now make sure there's enough contrast so it starts to match that background more. So before, after, okay? What I actually will do, and that's why I'm so glad this is a master class, with this layer selected, I'll just do a Command L for levels, okay? When I do it this way, right, I can add those adjustments like so, right? Making the darks all darker, click OK. And what happens over here, instead of it being an adjustment layer here, it actually adds it right in here as a smart filter. I typically choose this way because it, it cleans up my layers panel, right? That's what I will typically do. So 
So again, these two things, these both do the same thing, levels and levels, but if you basically add it this way, this is all I did. I did a command L. Let me show you that full bah, image adjustments. If you add it this way, it's going to try to apply it directly to the layer and then it just cleans up your layers panel. That's all. Right? Cool. Let's let's just add that. Let's have some fun today. I just appreciate you guys hanging out with me on this fine Friday. Who's is it payday for anybody? I'm just kind of curious. Who's getting paid today? <laughs> All right, there we are. <laughs> We could get into compositing like all day long because this desperately needs some compositing. I would want to tint, uh, tint him, um, you know, a different, uh, a whole different color. Number of ways we could do that. I would probably, you know what, quick and dirty, add a new layer, sample that background color. Here's just this new color that I can go ahead and clip right there. So I've just filled in this layer. It's now clipped to that astronaut. And then I can start to play with some of these blend modes that might work. Okay, so we have color burn, something like that. Already kind of quick and dirty kind of makes this uh, look a lot better, right? So that alone, even changing it to overlay, I'm sure soft light would do the same, right? You get the idea. Cool. All right, cool. Let's kind of have some more fun with this background where this ast astronaut's floating, okay? We got this guy floating around. There's so much more I want to do with him, but here he is. He is cool. Let's turn him off. Let's go back to this background here. Let's uh, make this even more interesting for this uh, astronaut. So we're going to go into filter, right? We've seen a couple of the filter gallery, right? I kind of want to go beyond that. Right? I want to go into the, some of the more like really obscure ones. Is that okay? Because a lot of you know what these do. It's like I get, I understand what a lot of these do. I can go into like wave, right? We know what this does. We can go ahead and make this look like uh, random uh, waves. In this case, I'll make it square. So this is what we'll do a lot if we wanted to make something look digital. You know, we can go ahead and give it this wave look. As you can see, it change right there. Right, we'll take the scale down, right? At least horizontally, but vertically it's a little larger. We can play with the wave length, click OK. There we go, and now we're in this digital background for this guy, right? Okay, fantastic. Cool, so that's one thing we can do. I want to, I kind of want to do something like this, but let's kind of take it to the next level. Let's think about this. What's the easiest way to show this stuff? Let's make a new layer. Let's get rid of this current wave filter. Let's uh, go to filter. We're going to go down in here to zoop. noise pixelate. We get it. Do you guys get all these? Like, oh. Pretty straightforward. Some of these get really get kind of interesting too. Uh, we have emboss. I'll show you why I would use that. And we also have extrude. Extrude is really fun. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We have an abstract background, and uh, let's take a look at what extrude will do. Rather than me try to explain it, let me just show you. Right up here, it's going to chop up that background into blocks. The size is going to be. 20 pixel blocks, right? I'm kind of just eyeing the size of it. Uh, we can give it uh, a really high depth because what it's going to do is it's going to give me these random blocks that uh, start coming out of the um, uh, background. Okay, we'll give it solid front faces as well. So let's just click OK. This is just one of those things that you're going to play with. And boss. Yeah, elephant in the room. The minimum and maximum filters can be interesting. Yeah. So this is what we get. See what happened here? 
It randomly produces these blocks, and let's turn off our astronaut. Randomly produces these blocks, okay? And creates this really cool pattern, right? Which is really pretty fun. Right? Easy enough. Let's go ahead and let's do, let's get rid of this extrude. I wanna kinda do something. I'm gonna get rid of that. I wanna kinda do the same thing, but I want you to, I just kinda wanna note where these dark areas are. Okay, so let's just like make note of where those dark areas are. Um, or do I even change it all together? But I'm gonna do the same thing, go into, Stylize, extrude, right in here. And now we're gonna do level-based. Level-based means it's gonna be low where it's dark and high where it's bright. So this is gonna be best when used with an image that has lots of variation. Uh, really bright brights, really dark darks. Okay, so that's what we'll do, we'll do 20 pixels. Actually, let me increase the size to about 40 and we'll keep the depth at 100, we'll click okay, it'll go through and it'll do its thing. All right, and there we have it. Look what it did, see that? I could even increase this some more. Everything is uh, changing based on the image, which is awesome. Very cool. Okay, so that being said, let's do this really fast. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna take this guy. We're gonna change this blend mode. Wait for it. All right, let's go with darken. Take these two, make it a smart object. I'm just gonna try this on this astronaut. So we're gonna have two versions of this astronaut. We're gonna go to filter, we're gonna go down to stylize, we're gonna do extrude. And uh, we'll do an even larger amount. So let's do 50 and do level based. Click OK. Eh. That did OK. All right, so I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go to filter, <clears throat> go back in here really fast. Let's not mask incomplete blocks. Uh, yeah, let's just take this down to 40. Let's take this depth, since there's not a lot of color depth here, or um, uh, sort of contrast, if you will, I'll do 200, right? So just increase that like so, and that looks like, eh, a little bit better. That's all. Right, what I would typically do in these situations is start to blend these two together, right? So I add a layer mask, start painting, right, to have part of it look like he's kind of turning digitally if you want to, right? So that's working out okay. Let's move on, let's move on from our um, Lego blocks. Okay, I'm glad some of you guys like it, that's good. Let's move on to something else. I have, I have other pieces that I can work with. Right, let's just jump into this one. Let's, let's move, let's see what I got in here. Got a couple things. Okay, okay. Let's take this, we take this moon for instance. Look at this gorgeous moon. Oh, so gorgeous. Here's another gorgeous moon. Look at that gorgeous. Love it. Look at how beautiful that is. Let's, let's get some fun backgrounds in here. All right, so bear with me. Let's grab this one. Let's actually, shortcut key, drop that in here, deselect. All right, let's do, let's do this. Here's our beautiful moon, looks pretty cool. Um, I wanna do the same, so the, the blocks weren't giving me the motion that I wanted. I want this astronaut to look like he's, I don't know, just kind of going through some digital transformation, right? And it's not giving me the blurs that I want. Um, so I'm gonna just show you what this does. Turn off this other stuff. Let's save this to my desktop. Wait for it. 
moon. <clears throat> All right, so uh, what I want to add now is uh, make this astronaut or make some object look like it's actually moving through the sky. All right, so um, I'm going to show you what's going to happen here initially. I'm going to show you the problems you're going to run into, then we're going to do it correctly. I have the moon selected. <clears throat> I'll go to, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll go down in here to stylize and I'm like, oh, there's this thing called wind. Let's select wind. Oh, wind's cool. Have you ever seen like that, um, I don't know, what do you even, pixel sorting? Essentially this looks very similar to pixel sorting, but this gives it wind and starts distorting all of those pixels, right? We have uh, just a couple settings. Uh, but blast and stagger seem to be uh, give me more dramatic results, right? And we can do it from either side, okay? So this is what I can try. Sometimes you will select blast, you'll click OK, like, ah, oh, that doesn't give me the amount that I want. So I typically undo this. I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to a new layer. I'm going to paste it. Let's do this. Rotate it. Uh, shrink it down some uh, and change the image size to like 600 right there we go I made this much smaller now right and I rotated it let's always make a duplicate of that layer now let's go into stylize go into say wind so now we'll go to wind now that this is smaller my whole goal is to just make these pixels much bigger and essentially that's what it did right I can click on any one of these kind of get the look that I want I kind of like stagger so that's all I'll go with click OK boom of course it adds this little piece I could always mask that out bam there we go and uh, I could do this also a couple more times too all right which is why I have this backup right so I'll typically try this a couple times maybe at different sizes but this starts to look like, oops, pixel sorting, if you will. I'll shrink this down a lot more. And then let's go back in there. And in fact, you know what? I could always make this a smart object because I absolutely love that I can apply something like wind to this. Oh, look at that. This is what I'm going for. All right, so there it is. This looks awesome. This is the sort of pixelation that I want. Click OK. There it is. Let's mask out this little chunk right there that I don't need. There we have it. Oh, I'm not supposed to do anything cool. Uh, Mia has to go get her a refill, a coffee refill. I, I feel ya. <clears throat> All right, there it is. Let's go back into this one. <clears throat> Wait for it. Uh, let's just rasterize this layer. All right, done, done. Let's get this out of the way. Command T, rotate it. Zoop. Bring it up, make it larger. And uh, there we have this sort of pixelated version. I would typically put this on top of the current one and then uh, potentially work with some masking, right? So I might want to keep the bottom part of that moon or keep the top part of the original would be even better. So let's move that original up to the top. Layer mask, B for brush, foreground color set to black. We could do something kind of like that. Now we just, again, just fun with effects. <clears throat> ah, melt that moon. That's right. We are melting it. This works for anything. You can take anything like the background. Let's do with this background just for fun. The key thing is you will have to 
rotate the canvas clockwise, right, or counterclockwise. But from here, this is when you want to go ahead and do the same, say, wind, like so. Oh, let's hit cancel. Let's change the image size. 1,000. Let's go back in there. Take a look at these swoochy. Oh yeah, so look at this. Look at this cool, almost like Northern Lights kind of type of look, like a digital look that I can work with and that I can bring into here and just make it as part of this overlay. You get the idea. All right, so again, here's kind of like one, uh, one simple design that I could start to exploit even further, right? So you could consider layering some of these, uh, this pixelation, uh, like one on top of the next. In fact, let's do this, let's try this. You ready for this? We're gonna take this pixelated version, Command J, just to jump it, make it a smart object. We're gonna go ahead and add some wind to it, okay? So we're gonna add wind uh, that's gonna go, whoop, Ugh. Where's my, come on space bar. All right, let's scroll up. Let's go in here, blur gallery, excuse me. Motion blur. All right. Ugh. So sorry, I'm having a problem with the zooms. Let's get this back to where it needs to be. There we are. Increase that a lot. Ah, it's a little too much. But right in here, I just added some motion blur to those pixels uh, and click OK. So now we have our blurry version. We still have our pixelated version. We have our blurry version, blurry version, and then we can take that one down like so and start to play with like the blend modes there as well. I'm not sure if that's working. What do you guys think, Mia? Help. Is this working? I don't think so. Right? a little too much in this case, right? Maybe just needs a little bit, right? Just needs a little bit and not that much. Okay, so let's move on, shall we? <laughs> All right, uh, Mio, again, just kind of finalizing this version that we can always come back to. Um, a lot of this, to make this a cool design, I'm probably gonna have to like simplify it right and uh just kind of make sure it has a nice composition what this could use from a composition standpoint is like a swooshy line going around it right so that's what uh that's what uh, is happening so oh great questions michelle what's the narrative here's the narrative for this one uh in a in a roundabout way i'm doing lots of this digital work because it's like people, the whole idea is like, what is real and what's not real? That's the idea. It's like, what is, is the moon, like, it's just, it's just silly. It's like, is the earth flat, right? People will believe anything if it's on the internet, right? It's just so dumb. So that's kind of the narrative for this one, okay? It's like this digital world that, you know, has no basis in reality. So that's kind of, the, that's like my take on these. So that's why I'm doing all this digital stuff, okay? Uh, oh, you are too kind. Jason Haas, you are too kind. Give me a shout out, that's so nice. That is so nice. Uh, I would probably do, uh, and again, this, this look is actually pretty cool. From here, I can have, I can kind of, uh, if this is real, what else is real? Yeah, so much, so much is real. You know what, everything, yeah. All right, so what I can do with this piece now, if I want to, I can still add some like swooshy star, kind of needs something. But I want to get into other things that I would like to do. Um, yeah, okay, so check this out. Let's go ahead and convert this all to a smart object. Why not? This is our whole comp, our whole design in here. 
And now we can go up here and we can kind of give it even more detail in life. Again, this is just, I'm showing you what these can do. We'll go down here to emboss, right? We'll go to emboss. I went in and I've embossed this whole scene, right? I can increase the height or whatever, the amount, right? We can see this change. Now, this might be okay. Not in and of itself is it that cool, but you can then take this, click okay. Every filter is gonna be a little bit better if you start to combine it with the original using blend modes, right? So as I roll down, I can start to take a look at sort of what I can get with each one of these. So right in here, that emboss with color dodge obviously brightens up the whole scene, but we can make it actually just keep that punch of color, that punch of detail. I just punched up all that detail using emboss and emboss filter, right? Again, just one way of doing things, and I'm sorry, my keyboard is not working. Ugh. Right? So again, just added an emboss there. We can turn that off. You can see before, after, or before, after, right? It just punches that up, okay? From there, we can even get even more crafty. We could do this all day long. We could have a smart object inside of a smart object inside of a smart object. We can go into the filter gallery, right? We can make it look even more old school. We could do like a reticulation, right? And let's just zoom out on this, zoom out. Right, let's make it look grainy like it's a poster from like the 70s, like it's a 70s sci-fi novel, right? Using reticulation. There's a number of other ones in here that we could use. Ooh, let's go into texture actually. Grain, ooh, grain would work well too. So again, throw a little grain on it. If I decide I wanna actually add two filters, I can. I can go down here, click. Well, I don't wanna add another grain. I wanna add reticulation and grain both. And boy, does that make it look ridiculous. <laughs> All right, so maybe not reticulation. All right, let's move on from this. I think we're just gonna go with gray and click okay, we'll call it done. Let's move on to another design. Let's get into something else. Let's get into this one. Shall we do this? Yeah, why not? Do one more. And again, I hope I hope this is entertaining for people, right? Coming in here. A lot of times I'll do just a, like a select subject. Um, in fact, let's deselect. Let's do a select color range. Oh yeah, select all that white. Look, it's so crispy. Into it. Select OK. Now we can go ahead and make that a mask, like so. Perfect. All right. Let's take our moon. Again, we have this cool moon. I think we'll use this one. Let's have this fun background. Here's our cool background. Let's make this a little larger. Or smaller, I don't know. I don't know which way to go with this. I have so many other layers. Let's do a reveal all. Ah, all right. Bring this in. Okay. Oh, Reverb Mike with the jokes. He's got jokes, folks. I love it. <laughs> ah. Let's do that one more time. Just making sure when I crop this, I'm not deleting the cropped pixels. It's right up here at the top. I typically make sure this is not checked. And zabam, there we are. Uh, all right. Hey, Excellence Amen Adigan. I have no idea if that's your real name, but we're so happy to have you here from YouTube. This is awesome. I'm gonna move uh, faster. We're gonna kind of move this up, go like that. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Go like that. Ugh, hate it. Sometimes when you do a, uh, when you select the color, yeah, this is, I got some weird halo effect going on. So let's invert that, fill that with black. There we go, fixed. Bam, bam. Move that up like that. 
expand it out. And uh, I think, well, I guess we could take this moon. I have other moons I can work with, but you know, in general we have these hands and then we'll put this like lovely moon in here, right? So it's like very much like a, uh, uh, a godlike uh, design, if you will, right? I'm not making any religious statement. I'm just doing cool design work and showing you how you can actually have a sphere and wrap hands around it. So right here, I made these two layers and it's gonna be creating a layer sandwich. So right here and right here, these two. So we have hands. Tab key, moon, tab key. Oh, it's cause it wasn't on, but let's turn on this one. Hands, there we go. Let's go back up to this top one, turn off that first one. Let's get this party started. Ah, my my uh, space bar is not working today. Uh, by the way, stay tuned. Um, I think we have Jason back up again. Hopefully you've been enjoying his masterclass. Been super cool to have a, a video and audio masterclass, which I think is pretty cool. So it's fun seeing him, uh, you know, as always, live streaming is pretty awesome, okay. So just go right up here. I'm not worried too much about this. I'm just using my pen tool to make sure I get the two thumbs. That's probably the biggest part, right? Grab these two thumbs. Like so. This is what I do. This is what things get ugly, right? Command key, click. Oh, turn that into a selection. Now I can go ahead and invert that, fill it with black. And now we just have these thumbs right here, okay? So I've just kind of cut out the thumbs and now we have the hands right there and sure enough, we can move this around like so. Ooh. All right. Yeah, by the way, it's like been crazy. Uh, I of course don't know where everybody lives, but here in Colorado, I feel for people, and my heart goes out to people in uh, like California because it's a lot of wildfires and it's just like the place is up in smoke. So the moon will be like a blood red moon just from all that smoke being in the air. It's crazy. Two thumbs up into it. Okay, so uh, let's do this now. I have these hands, okay? For these hands, I want to tint them the background color. You ready for this? Uh, I will add a curves layer right over here, bam. Make sure it is clipped to the hands, clipping mask. Make sure it is selected right here. And then I'll go right up here. And a lot of people will do this. They'll try to make this lighter and darker, but you know what? This black, there's no black in the background. The darkest color is that blue. So wherever it's black here, I actually need it to be blue. And uh, honestly, wherever it is light on the hands, I need it to be this lightest color, which is like a gold color. Or excuse me, more like, um, I don't know, red. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll just kind of reset that. We'll hold down the option key, we'll click auto. So these are your auto color correction options. Uh, Gutam, um, I use, I just use the pen tool. I don't use curvature pen, curvature tool because I've kind of beaten the curve, if you will, when it comes to learning the pen tool. So we're gonna select dark and light colors, find them. Then we'll go ahead and sample that background. There we go. That's the dark color. Is that black ground, ba that black ground? <laughs> Take the highlights, click and add the highlights like so. So we kind of tinted that. Uh, lights and darks, and then I can, of course, adjust this any way I want to as well, okay? So that's all I'm kind of doing here. Uh, again, I can adjust this any way I want, but kind of picking those colors. Actually, you know what, even right down here, this is probably the darkest color for that. Click OK, click OK, done. Don't save it as the default. I'd say that looks pretty good. Put that in a folder with a layer mask, B for brush. Let's fade it out. Fade it out, folks, fade it out. Let's do something kind of like that, right? So I did that to uh, the hands, but I need to do it to the thumbs, right? So we'll just take this and do that, 
business. There we are. We're getting there. We're getting there, folks. Command T. All right, let's like putting putting the moon in the in the sky. Uh, by the way, yeah, Felicia, I'm glad you uh, like that because I absolutely love that uh, feature, being able to select the lights and darks, right? So this is this is looking pretty good, but the cool thing is, is I could actually bring back some of those highlights still, right? So that's what I want to do because those brights are still there. I want to make this moon glow, so let's just go ahead and add an outer glow. Why not? Crank it up. Crank it up. It could be even larger, to be honest with you, right? So we'll give it this glow. But more importantly, for the curves, we want to kind of subtract. So B for brush, and we'll just remove that darkness, kind of give it that light, like so. Okay, so just like give it a little light halo around the fingers, like that. Okay, same thing down here. Give it that splash. Look at that. Like that. Let's see? Uh, what was that? Going to throw some outer glow on that moon? Yes, I just, Mia, we we think alike. I'm into it. I'm into it. But look at that. Uh, the hands were pretty flat, and now they're like so coming to life just by painting on them like this. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. Oop. Mess that up. Something kind of like that. Uh, you get the idea. Come in here. I would probably even advance that glow a little bit more. Oh, it's maybe a little much. Boom. B for brush. Oh. Let's undo that. Uh, let me check the time. Looks like I have about eight minutes still. Um, yeah, we're coming a long way. So what is the problem with this? Like this, like the key takeaway, anytime you're doing any sort of compositing, you of course have to match up your lights and darks, but also realize that blacks are never really black. Whites are never really white. Like the more variation you can add, the more interesting it's going to be. Right, so that's my problem with this moon. It's crazy moon in here. Yeah, we added an outer glow to it. But boy, that's just like, ugh, white? Mm. Set to overlay, that's good. Um, but it, it just needs, we just need to kind of change the color a little bit. We just need to knock it down a little bit. It's just like too white and that looks a little bit better. Okay, cool. Uh, would it have a warm, exactly, that's, that's what I'm talking about, Michelle, you are good. It needs to have that warm glow, right? It totally needs to have that warm glow. This is too stark, right? We could even change this a little bit more. Let's see what happens. Let's get a little bit more extreme. It starts, anytime you start to add like yellow and it's a, you know, it's a glow, it starts to get a little bit muddy. Right, so you need to kind of layer a, probably a couple different colors, one on top of the next. Uh, in this case, maybe we want the, 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 the brighter the color, the brighter colors are more closer to the light source, and then you can change it to a yellow as it goes out. So that's typically what I would do, but it ultimately means adding a multitude of uh, colors. But what I end up doing is I just paint. That's all I end up doing, it's like, okay, yeah, it's too uniform. Let's add this glow right in here. Let's colorize it. There we go, see? Uh, you probably can't even tell, but I don't know, it's, it's looking kind of good. All right, my friends, how's everybody doing? Right in here, I'm gonna add some more here. Oh yeah, make it, make it pop, they say. Go down into, say like, Again, overlay or soft light. I'm just playing with that, those glows down there. Kind of seeing what, what's working. Mm, yeah, it's okay. It is okay. Uh, 
Uh, is the blue is is warmer on the temperature scale than red? That's why blue stars are far warmer than red ones. Blue is warmer on the temperature scale? You're blowing my mind. You're blowing my mind, young Eric. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, so the edge on the moon is very sharp. Another good call. Uh, just kind of comparing two photos, you gotta make sure sort of the crisp crispness matches up. Uh, if anything, we could actually add more detail to the hands if we want to, um, or less detail, but I kind of also don't want to mess with it too much. Another thing that's kind of lame, what's going on down here? Oh, it's just like you obviously just just added a layer mask and used a brush. <laughs> Uh, right? Doesn't really work. It's like, okay, you. Oh, you look at you cheat. Look at you just like making this look lame. It's because I'm actually out of, uh, <laughs> the arms only go so, so far down. But right in here, I'd add black to one side and, or a dark color to one side and adjust accordingly. Let's wait for this. Cool. Uh... So, Mike, I don't know if you're still here. Gosh, it's been probably 20 minutes, and I just, I'm just noticing that question. Um, but basically, Pixel Squid is the site that will allow you to uh, drop in renders of 3D objects and adjust the rotation. So if we decided that we were like, hey, we wanna get, we wanna get crazy, you know, we can make this weird and drop in, you guys know me, a skull, right? I don't think that's gonna add us, or give us any fail, do anything for us really. Let's rotate it. Turn off the shadows, turn on high res. Right, like that, scale it down into place. Right, and if we wanted to kind of make this look kind of trippy, Yeah, there you go. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. Reverb mic. I do the exact same. I hear you, buddy. I'm into it. I would, I would, let's go ahead and, you know, again, not crazy about that skull. So cheesy. It's so cheesy. It's not bad. I don't know what you guys think. Um, but yeah, right down here, we kind of have that problem. Let's just disable that layer mask. We can see where the arms are cut off. Typically, I would extend this out myself, by the way. Um, let's just do it. It's gonna take time. And that's okay. Chop off that weirdness. Take each one of these separately. And this is usually where I run out of time. But I'm just trying to keep that bottom part intact. Right, I pr probably could have also painted it. Throw a little paint on there. Just blend it. Turn that back on. Move this down. That's a long arm. It is a long arm, isn't it? Yeah, I probably would have been better off painting it. I think that other process is taking a little, little bit too much time. 
But again, just come down here. Just need to add a little bit right down here for the arm. So let's just try this really fast. There we go. Something like that. Ugh. All right, so you get the idea. I just added a hint there. I think that's fine, right? It's totally fine. And I can clean it up more later on and then I will post to um, our lovely, uh, to my Instagram. But uh, that kind of wraps it up for me. Just wanted to say thank you for hanging out with me on this uh, beautiful Friday. For some of you, it might be payday, I don't know. Uh, but it's good to have you here. We actually did quite a bit. Follow me on Instagram and uh, we'll see which ones I end up posting, whether it's gonna be, it's gonna be one of these two. Something like this I like, and then this other file as well. So you get the idea. Stay tuned, we got Jason up next. Uh, but hopefully you appreciated this. I appreciated you guys hanging out with me. Awesome, I will let you go. And um, don't forget to follow me on all the social medias uh, and see the latest. All right, cool. Thank you so much for all your help. I feel like I need to give everybody credit for what I made today because uh, you helped me with it. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Jason. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a beautiful one. And uh, I hope to talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much. Stay tuned for Jason. Thanks. For